Palestinians, as an occupied people, have the right to defend themselves by all feasible means. Not by firing rockets yes. from a civilian yes. population. I have said it clearly. Moral equivalence up to wazoo. And also it's about anti-Semitism and also Islamophobia. Man. So meanwhile, the Biden administration, they are making some of the right moves. They are saying some of the right things. So, for example, the, the Biden administration, Joe Biden, put out a statement today. He said the recent attacks on the Jewish community are despicable and they must stop. I condemn this hateful behavior at home and abroad. It's up to all of us to give hate. Hate, no safe harbor. So good for him. That's an actual statement, as opposed to all the rest of these pathetic Democrats who are putting out statements about anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. Again, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty incredible thing from the same people who are very concerned about the phrase all lives matter. Right. When, when someone say black lives matter and somebody else would say all lives matter. How dare you? You're devaluing our movement. The same people are like anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. Now, at least all lives matter was rejecting the basic contention that black people were being specifically singled out for harsh treatment by the police with regard to being murdered by the cops. Yeah, that's a statistical reality. But when it comes to anti-Semitism, there is a radical uptick in anti-Semitism. And these same Democrats are like, yeah, and also Islamophobia, which is the same way they shied away from Elhan Omar being a radical anti-Semite last year when they were like, we condemn anti-Semitism and also all these other forms of hatred and everything bad in the universe. Baffling with bullcrap. Anyway, the Biden administration saying the right things on anti-Semitism, the Biden administration suggesting Israel had a right and a duty to protect itself last week. So they did a lot better on this than I thought they were going to. Meanwhile, however, they are indeed pursuing bad policy with regard to the Iranian regimes. The Iranian regime is the, the state. It is the sponsor state of Hamas. Right? Hamas admits that they got all of their technology from Iran. And Hamas acknowledges that, that Iran backed them. And in fact, Iran cheered the attacks. According to the New York Times, Tehran jumped at the chance to portray militants' barrages on Israel as revenge for Israeli attacks on Iran. The leadership of Iran engaged in a long shadow war with Israel on land, air, and sea did not try to conceal the pleasure it took in the most recent Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Tehran praised the damage being done to its enemy. State news media and conservative commentators highlighted Iran's role in providing weaponry and military training to Palestinian militants in Gaza to hammer Israeli communities. So Iran is making no, no bones about the fact that it supports Hamas. Meanwhile, Hamas is acknowledging that they openly commit war crimes. And here is Hamas's spokesperson on Sky News basically saying, yeah, sure, we commit war crimes. Any people under occupation based on the international law have the, all, all the right to defend themselves by all feasible means they have. Not by firing rockets yes. from a civilian yes. population. I have said it clearly. Palestinians, as an occupied people, have the right to defend themselves by all feasible means, including armed resistance. But when it comes to civilians, we have said it many times. We are ready to stop firing uh, rockets or attacking civilians if the Israelis stop attacking our people. It's unbelievable. So he's saying openly, right? This is Basem Naim, who's the Hamas spokesperson. Remember, this is... This is the government that people are supporting. When you say, I support the Palestinians and the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, you don't mean the Palestinian people unless you also want to get rid of Hamas. But you don't want to get rid of Hamas. So what am I left to conclude? Okay, they are openly saying that they fire rockets from civilian areas at civilians. They say this sort of stuff openly. They're not hiding the ball here. Meanwhile, even despite the ceasefire, Hamas supporters were attacking Jewish homes outside Jerusalem over the weekend. There's video of it. They were literally just firing ordnance down from Arab areas near Jerusalem into the Jewish areas of Jerusalem. You can see it happening. They're shooting fireworks at the Jewish areas in Jerusalem. Unreal. Oh, you hear the... Uh... Don't worry, there's moral equivalence. You shoot, you shoot randomly rockets at uh, an, an ordinance at Jewish homes, right? These are civilians. They're not military targets. Shouting Allahu Akbar. That's exactly the same as the Israelis targeting military infrastructure. In any case, how has the, the Biden administration responded to the fact that Hamas, an Iran-backed terrorist group, just committed a vast act of terrorism against America's ally Israel? Uh, Blinken says we have to cut a deal with Iran. Here is Tony Blinken, the Secretary of State. Many of these actions are going forward now uh, while the, uh, you know, and, and have gone forward over the last few years under the so-called maximum pressure uh, being exerted by the uh, by the previous administration and clearly did not get the result that we all seek, which is to curb all of these activities. But the first thing that we need to do is put the nuclear problem back in the box. That's why we're committed to trying to see if Iran will come back into compliance with the nuclear agreement, the so-called JCPOA. That's what we're engaged in now. 
the lie that the Biden administration is talking about here is they say, well, if we get them back in the nuclear box, we'll stop them from the terrorism. Except that's not what they do. Okay, the JCPOA did not stop Iran from fomenting terrorism. How do you think Hamas got all these rockets? Hamas was having its stockpiles built up more rapidly before Trump pulled out of the JCPOA than after the JCPOA was ended. And Hamas... Hamas, all these terrorist groups get support from Iran. When Iran has more money, they spend the money on terrorism. John Kerry admitted as much after cutting the Iran deal in the first place. Well, Israel understands that it has to rely on itself in large measure here, which is why there was a giant blast at an Iranian complex housing their drone factory. So Israel shot down an Iranian armed drone the other day. And mysteriously, a complex that houses a factory that makes Iranian drones has now suffered a major explosion. The blast at the weekend in, uh, over the weekend injured at least nine workers at the petrochemical factory in Isfahan. The Iran Aircraft Manufacturing Industrial Company, which produces a variety of aircraft and drones for Iranian and pro-Iranian forces, is located in the complex. Iran has not provided information on the cause of the incident, but Israel, of course, has, has carried out significant strikes internal to Iran. Meanwhile, speaking of the, the supposed non-radicalism of Palestinians on the Temple Mount, remember, According to Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib and everyone else lying about the situation in Israel, this is all kicked off by Israelis attacking Palestinians on the Temple Mount, which is insane. Again, I've been up on the Temple Mount. Jews have to be guarded by police forces as they are ushered through the holiest site in Judaism. Meanwhile, Arabs have free reign on the Temple Mount because it is effectively run by the Islamic Waqf. Al-Aqsa was being used as a staging ground for attacks on Jewish police officers. So even after this, there's a vast video emerging, like after the ceasefire of people attacking police officers on the Temple Mount. In fact, videos on social media have shown, believe it or not, that members of the hundreds of Palestinians inside the Al-Aqsa Mosque were, were cheering. The, the for, they forced out the Jerusalem Grand Mufti. Okay, the Jerusalem Grand Mufti is a guy named Mohammed Hussein. He works for the Palestinian Authority. Hey, and supporters inside Al-Aqsa forced him to leave while shouting, we are Mohammed Diaf's men. Mohammed Diaf is the terror head of Hamas. They're chanting, they're chanting this inside a mosque, a very peaceful and religious place. I remember the last time inside a, a synagogue, we started chanting for support of terrorism, but apparently this is common practice inside Al-Aqsa these days. So they're chanting about how they are Mohammed Diaf's men. Don't worry, everything is fine. Everything, and, and you know what? Moral equivalence up the wazoo. And also it's about anti-Semitism and also Islamophobia. Man, you know, it's, it's, there are certain conflicts in, uh, in ideology where things sort of crystallize. And honestly, if you have a tough time with this one, I've got to question your moral bona fides. If you have a real tough time questioning the difference between an Israeli government that attempts to minimize civilian casualties and a Hamas government that attempts to maximize them, between an Israeli population that is attempting to coexist with an internal Israeli Arab population and treat those Israeli Arabs as full citizens with full rights and a, an Arab world that treats Jews not only as second-class citizens, but, I mean, Jews do not exist, effectively speaking, inside the Arab world, and inside the Muslim world more specifically. If you are somebody who has a tough time just saying anti-Semitic attacks are bad, regardless of the source of the anti-Semitic attacks, I do have to question your ability to perform basic moral math. And the Democratic Party increasingly cannot perform basic moral math. Good for Joe Biden for at least doing some of it. But I fear that Joe Biden is not the wave of the Democratic Party future. I was there in 2012 when, when Antonio Villaraigosa, who was heading up the Democratic National Convention, actively overrode a voice vote and allowed the, the Democratic National Committee platform to include the idea that Jerusalem was, was the capital of the Jewish state. I was there when, when he basically, there was a voice vote on it. He lost the voice vote. He just overrode them. I remember this vividly. And now you have 200 Democrats who voted in the House not to cut off funding to groups that fund Hamas. So yeah, the future of the Democratic Party does look a lot more like the squad and like Jamal Bowman and like AOC and like Elhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib in terms of their anti-Semitic attacks on the Jewish state. And by extension, a certain level of tacit support for anti-Semites in the United States. And sometimes not so tacit. I mean, AOC was meeting with, with Jeremy Corbyn I fear for the future. People talk about they fear for the future of the Republican Party because of Trump and authoritarianism and all this. The, the party that, that I fear right now is not the Republican Party, and it is not close when it comes to being a Jew in America. The party I fear is the party that has been poo-pooing, playing up, and, and minimizing the impact of anti-Semitism in the United States. That is a scary, scary thing as a Jew living in the United States who wears a yarmulke proudly and will continue to do so. 
How's this for a title? Ben Shapiro Show subscriber destroys like button with clicks and logic. I'd watch that. Make it happen, gang.